Would you want fear to stop you from doing this? Or seeing this? Or enjoying this? In today's video, we'll explore fear of traveling. And is it overrated? As we age and realize our own mortality, which gives us the impetus to go and visit unseen distant shores, it's natural that fear of the unknown plays a part of whether you make the journey or not. So without further ado, let's explore some of the fears that we've experienced in the last three years of our traveling. Let's face it, selling everything we own and using the funds for travel is not everyone's cup of tea. However, to offset that fear, we realized that we could never afford to travel the world and still keep our possessions, you know, house, car, toys. In the book, The Wanderer by Sterling Hayden, he says it best. We are all enmeshed in the cancerous discipline of security. And in the worship of security, we fling our lives beneath the wheels of routine. And before we know it, our lives are gone. So let's grab a coffee and talk about the number one fear on our list, which is crime. It it's seems awful. like every day we're bombarded by the mainstream media about crime rates in different countries, where you should and shouldn't go. Our experience of travel to date is that most countries welcome travelers and of course, you have to do your own due diligence, as most cities around the world have a no-go area where crime might be a little higher. However, tourism is a huge source of income for most countries, so they're very aware of the fact that they have to do a lot to welcome you. In fact, Mexico City is considered one of the highest crime rate cities in the world. However, this is in fact our third visit here. Pickpockets and petty crime exist almost everywhere, and that's because of the ever-widening gulf between the have and the have-nots. So you need to be forewarned and take some precautions. We actually did a video on five tips for international travel and how you can be safe in those types of environments. A simple thing, like staying in a decent neighborhood, can greatly mitigate your chance of being the victim of a crime. So do some research ahead of time. By all means, view some of our videos and you'll be able to know if you're in a good, safe place. At the end of the day, don't believe everything that you read, as it may stop you from exploring a part of the world that could be utterly delightful. And number two, the second thing I hear the most is, I don't speak a foreign language. And believe me, I sympathize with this a lot. As a person who only speaks passable Spanish, but has lived in Tunisia, Turkey, and Malta, I can get the fact that it's worrying when you don't feel you can communicate with someone else. I've tried to flip it on its head and be able to look at it as an opportunity to learn and grow. I will tell you that there are some fantastic things that can be used that are technology driven, like Google Translate, and I use that a lot. I'm going to do just a really quick overview of Google Translate here so that you can get an idea of, even for somebody my age, 66, it's pretty easy to use and can help you greatly to mitigate that fear of not understanding a foreign language. And let me put your mind at rest about the language thing as well. With all the countries we visited, we have found that English is the second language that most people speak. And we've been to very few countries where we've not met anybody that speaks English. Usually during the course of a day, whether it be Turkey or Tunisia, we'll bump into at least one or two people that do speak English. So we're pretty lucky if we're coming from an English speaking country because that seems to be the prevalent language worldwide now. We're at number three and this fear is very valid and that's what if I get sick? Um, and anybody who's had Montezuma's Revenge uh, you know what I mean. It's, uh, it is really frightening to not feel well in a foreign country. So step number one, or the first thing that we do when we come to a foreign country, is we want to make sure we know what the local emergency number is. So in Mexico, it's 911, just like it is in the United States. 
However, for instance, in England, it's 999. So knowing things like that instantly give you a better sense of security. The next thing that we do is we try to locate a pharmacy that's close to wherever our accommodation is. That's important. The pharmacists in most foreign countries that we've been to are incredibly helpful at helping you diagnose maybe what you have. And then many pharmacies actually have a doctor on hand who can help you as well if you feel like you have something that might be a little bit more advanced. We have found that healthcare in most other countries is very inexpensive. So if you get catastrophic insurance, that can take care of something big. And then if there's something smaller, we've usually just paid out of pocket. We've since seen doctors in see, Turkey, Tunisia, England, and Mexico, and have found that the doctors in all of these countries actually spoke English as well. And they were incredibly uh, well-trained, we felt very confident that we were being given a very high standard of healthcare in all of those instances. Okay, here we are at number four, and that is getting out of your comfort zone, I know is a big fear for a lot of people. And I think Mark Twain got it right in his quote when he said, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the things that you did. My bungee jump in New Zealand was my biggest exodus from my comfort zone. However, at 66, I'm so glad I made that leap at 46. Getting out of your comfort zone doesn't have to be a grand gesture. Uh, merely trying a new food or exploring a new place, um, those are all part of tackling this fear. Subduing this fear is where many of our best memories are going to be made. So here we are at our number five, which is, it's good to start small. If you haven't traveled and you had a fear of traveling, you know, start small. You don't need to go overseas on your first trip. If you live in Canada or the United States, just going from one part of the country to another is a pretty big trip. So keep in mind that people want you to, tr to visit them. I mean, tourism is a major money maker the world over for most countries. Um, and especially with the advent of social media, um, many places are now being held accountable for their service. So you'll find that there is definitely an upgraded level of kindness when you go to these different places. I must confess that I've seen an enormous change in the last three years, and I think it's due to social media. I think many of these countries are very cognizant of bad postings and negative feedback and so many of them are really sensitive to it. Um, I notice especially the top countries and it's interesting to note that num the number one country to be visited is France. Uh, number two being Spain, uh, followed by the US of A, then China, then Italy, Turkey, Mexico, Thailand, Germany, and lastly the UK. So leave your fears at the door of the plane. Um, break from routine, and go travel. Speaking as someone who's had to overcome so many of their fears, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad I persevered. The benefits have far outweighed the challenges that we've come across in the last three years. So I hope this video inspires you to get out and travel. It's a big, beautiful world, and it's so wonderful to see. And thanks so much for watching the video. If you've enjoyed the video, a thumbs up really helps the channel, or better yet, subscribe. We do videos every week. Thanks so much. Cheers for now.